Hi, this is Rob Riker with NextGen T. We're here at Cisco Live 2019 in San Diego, California. I'm joined here by Uma, who is a software engineer with Cisco. And what he's going to do is walk us through a high-level breakdown as to what SD access is and how it kind of works. So Uma, if you wouldn't mind giving us a kind of a high-level breakdown to what SD access is and kind of some of the nerd knobs and stuff that make it actually work on the back end. Sure, sure. Uh, hey, um, so software-defined access is the next generation of uh, campus architecture wherein you're basically uh, applying segmentation and policy in a, in a completely different way. So what we're doing here is uh, traditionally we've been using VLANs and uh, access control lists to actually manage the networks, basically group different sets of users, like your employees, your uh, your, VLA, your your IoT devices, your camera devices. So traditionally, if, we, if you look at networking, we have been using VLANs to group these different users. Um, and then we used to apply access control lists in order to give policies between these groups, right? So that has been uh, really challenging to maintain because over a period of time, you end up uh, accumulating like thousands of ACLs and somebody leaves the company, it's really hard to go back and find out what those ACLs are doing, right? So software-defined access kind of uh, gives you a fabric overlay on top of your underlay your existing network that will actually actually separate the forwarding plane what it what it does is it uses VXLAN to encapsulate your uh, data packets it will uh, add uh, SGT tags or trusted group tags to the user so that uh, the user is identified irrespective of what IP address he has so let's say a user for uh, from one uh, moves from one part of your campus to another part of your campus and he, he might, he'll definitely get a different IP address but however since he has the same group tag uh, he will be able to identify and be given the same policy that he had in the other uh, location in your campus. So that's kind of a high-level overview of uh, SD access. Uh, DNA Center is the um, solution, the application that enables uh, SD access. It's an orchestration solution that gives us automation capabilities, as well as uh, automated onboarding of devices, provisioning of devices, and also an intent-based solution where you can define your uh, intent, which is uh, your high-level policies. You can define your virtual networks or groups uh, that we talked about, the employee group, the IoT group, the camera group. So you can basically have those different groups uh, figured out in your in your campus and then within those groups let's say within employees you have your finance group uh, you have your uh, 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 your payroll they have the different requirements they need to connect to different resources in your network right so you can actually set up those carve those groups within your virtual networks and apply different policies from for each of these uh, groups of users um, I can show a quick demo of that so here what you're seeing is uh, Cisco DNA Center, this is, uh, this is your uh, landing page as we call it. This gives you a, a high level picture of your network, your different sites, your network profiles, um, you know, the licenses uh, involved as well as a, a summary of your network devices, clients, uh, wireless and wired. Uh, we go to a provision tab here just to look at the fabric here. Um, Here's our fabric deployment. Uh, we have a Cisco Live fabric created for, for this event. Uh, we have this uh, software defined access solution running at the Marriott Marquis uh, Hotel right next door. Uh, this is what we are looking at here. Uh, this is the fa fabric uh, deployment that we have. Um, so, uh, so here we have um, a Catalyst 9K based uh, fabric solution where you have a 9500 uh, border and control plane. You have your 9300 access switches, that is the edge node, and then we have the 3560 um, access switches, the layer 2 access switches, where we have our 3800 access points connected. Um, so this is like uh, the end-to-end -end fabric that you're seeing right now at the Marriott, and uh, it it's also has a, a wireless LAN controller, a 9800 wireless LAN controller that manages the uh, 3800 access points. So. So that's kind of the uh, overview of the fabric uh, that we have. And, and looking at the monitoring aspects of DNA Center, we also have, um, uh, we can look at the overall health of the network. We can look at the wired clients connected. Right now we have about 600 plus wireless LAN, uh, wireless LAN clients connected. And uh, if you want to look at the uh, dashboard, you can go to the network health dashboard to look at the health of the network devices. Um, so currently we are looking at um, we're looking at these different types of devices that we have. We have wireless controllers, we have access switches, distribution switches. So this gives me an understanding of how my network is performing. Uh, if I see something in red here, I know that there's something not going well with that particular device. So I can actually go um, in depth into those devices and be able to drill down to the specific devices that are having a problem and then go, um, yeah, go into more details for that specific device. So that's what we call the device 360 of that uh, device. Uh, similarly, we can do the same thing uh, for the clients. Uh, we have a client health dashboard here where 
We can look at a higher level picture of uh, how the clients are performing. We have both wireless and wired clients. This gives us the overall health of the network uh, in terms of client health. Um, if we look at the wireless LAN clients here, we have 84% clients that are having good connectivity. If I want to drill down deeper into the clients that are having a problem, I can um, go much deeper and, and click on this and see those specific clients that are having a problem. So I have seen these two clients that are having problem with connecting to the network, so I can go, um, go into the de details to find out what exactly is wrong with this particular device and, um, and troubleshoot from here. So, so it's kind of giving us um, from the top level view of things, uh, trying to see which network devices are uh, are not performing well, which clients are not performing well, and then drill down to the specific device that is having a problem and see where exactly this device is connected. Traditionally, if we had to do this, we had to log into multiple devices, your wireless LAN controllers, your um, your access points, and, and then uh, collect a lot of debugs to in, a, in order to figure out. But with this, you're uh, pinpointing the exact problem in your network and then start the troubleshooting from there, which basically saves a lot of time as well as it gives us um, steps in order to um, you know, apply best practices to troubleshoot a problem on the network. So it's kind of DNA Center it gives us um, the automation ca capabilities with SD access as well as monitoring capabilities with assurance. Awesome, Uma. Thanks for that really good breakdown. So just to go a little bit more on the, the infrastructure side, that's where a lot of our students are coming into play. So when you mentioned VXLAN and stuff like that, traditional networking is you have access to switches connected to distribution connected to the core, right. and you've got MAC address flooding that goes throughout the entire network. Yeah. So that aspect of it is completely pulled out of the network from what I understand about how VXLAN works. Yes. So what you end up doing is you end up getting VXLAN, another protocol known as LISP, yes. that helps to correlate how all of these devices are going to communicate. Can right. you talk kind of briefly on how that comes into play? Because that's where a lot of traditional networking folks when they start to go into architectures like this, start right, to struggle right. and begin to, right. like, well, how does this underlay, overlay aspect kind of come into play? Correct. So, so for SD access, we have an L3 uh, routed underlay, routed access underlay, which is your traditional network. But uh, traditionally, you had L2, but uh, but for SD access, we, we need an L3 network. And you need a certain MTU, which is the uh, size of the uh, mi minimum trans transmission unit, which is what you need for SD access. So basically, VXLAN is the data plane. Uh, you, uh, VXLAN carries the encapsulation, which is the uh, security group tag, as well as the uh, VNID, which is the virtual network ID of the of the of the packet. So that is how you identify uh, a particular user uh, belongs to a particular group, which is a virtual network, or an SGT, which is a security group tag. Right. So these are the two things that we have that helps to identify. So LISP is basically the control plane where uh, the the mapping is stored. So in order to find out, uh, let's go back to the fabric here quickly. So here's uh, taking a look at our fabric here. So, <clears throat> so as we can see here, we have the control plane here, which are 9500s. This actually has the list database. List database, when I say it, it's basically a database of endpoints. Uh, let's say I have a couple of endpoints connected here, a couple of clients connected here. So uh, in order to understand, in order to reach these endpoints, we, it's important to know which uh, edge nodes they are connected to, right? So that mapping of end, edge node versus endpoints is actually stored in the control plane. So that is actually the LISP database. So, uh, so that's what we mean by LISP control plane, where when, uh, let's say, a client from this edge node wants to talk to a client in this edge node, it basically queries that LISP database in order to find out the destination, destination edge node. So we use traditional, uh, traditionally you would use a routing protocol or uh, MAC address flooding in order to allow that layer right. two, layer three communication. That's gone away in yeah. this design. So now we're using an underlay, which yeah. is typically some sort of routing protocol like ISIS. Yes. And then we use an overlay like LISP for, to figure out where our nodes are and then VXLAN in order to propagate MAC address and ARP and entries and stuff like that. Exactly. Excellent, perfect. So with this breakdown, I noticed that when you were talking about the provision and the assurance, is there a real reason why assurance would be something that I would want to use on DNA Center versus like uh, SolarWinds SNMP monitoring or something along those lines? Is there a different variation of that? 
Uh, no, so, so assurance is part of the DNA center, uh, uh, DNA center, and uh, basically what it does is it talks to all the de devices, your switches, your routers, your wireless client controllers, and, and continuously collects the telemetry data from all these devices. And what it does is it stores your data up to two weeks and even longer in some cases, and then you can use that historical data in order to go back and troubleshoot a problem. So that is really powerful because a lot of times when a problem happens, the user doesn't normally report it right away, and even if it did, the, the problem has already passed. So in order to go back in time, it's important to store that historical data, historical correlated data, uh, to be uh, to, uh, to, to be very clear. Because you know, in order to uh, debug a problem, you need to look at several things. You need to look at the switch. You need to look at the router. You need to look at the wireless LAN controller, and also the RF environment, the RF map, um, the heat map, how it looks like. So all that data is being captured in in, in, in assurance, and then it gives us a, a historical picture of that. Um, of that problem, so it's easier to debug. It's easier to correlate, uh, you know, uh, issues between different devices. Well, thanks, Um. I really appreciate that breakdown. This is Rob Riker at Cisco Live 2019 in San Diego, California. Until next time, guys. Jacob Hess here. Thank you guys for viewing the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'd also like to remind you that if you're truly serious about your career in information technology, be sure to check out our Career Blueprint and Engineer Training Program at www.zerotoengineer.com.